So I know we're going to have a couple people join us still. Uh, for everybody who's on the webinar now, either live on Zoom or live on Facebook, welcome. My name is Shannon. I am the host of Marketplace Seller Courses uh, Facebook webinar live. And with me, I have today Tony Cassandrinos. He is the co-owner of Cassandrinos Olive Oil and an affiliate marketing guru, uh, if I have ever met one. And so, uh, Tony, thanks so much for coming on today. I'm really excited for uh, us to go through the webinar. No, you're welcome. Excited to be here. So uh, just a little housekeeping first. Um, this entire webinar will be recorded. So if you miss it, if you have to bail out early, no problem. Um, you can watch it live on Facebook at Marketplace Seller Courses. And it will also be on our website, marketplacesellercourses.com afterwards. Um, we're gonna go through the whole webinar and uh, it'll be largely Q&A. And if you have questions throughout the webinar, you can post those both in Zoom or as comments on Facebook. And we will try to answer those throughout, but we'll focus most of the questions um, at the end. And then at the very, very end, we will be able to have some uh, special contact information for Tony if you wanna follow up and get more information. So Tony, thanks again so much. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Definitely. Um, to, to kick it off, how did you first get started in, in business in terms of uh, what you're doing right now? What was your sort of uh, initial inception point? Um, well, make a long story short, <laughs> I had uh, my uncle and uh, my father's uh, olive oil with me in my car. And <laughs> we, we've always had it in the family, but we normally just used it for ourselves and then sold uh, everything that we press in bulk. Um, my uncle bottles and brings a little bit over here to America. Well, I started sharing it with some friends. Um, after a few months, it snowballed to, I had a lot of people asking me and then it got to the point where it was like probably over a hundred people. So I was like, huh, maybe I'm onto something here. So uh, made a website, started selling it online and then um, yeah, kind of snowballed from there. I mean, I, I, got overwhelmed pretty quick because I'm a one man I was a one man show at the time I was uh, it was a side thing that I had started um, and I brought my sister into it about a year after we started which was back in like 2011 and um, yeah it's just been going ever since it's been growing we've both been uh, well my sister's going full-time right now but uh, I, it's been a side thing the whole time the last okay. six years now and what, what makes Cassandrinos olive oil special? Uh, I know you've mentioned things like family farm and cold. Mm -hmm. Talk about what makes it unique just as a product in general. I think it's important as we kind of get into this. And no, definitely. Definitely. The conversation. Well, what, the one, I mean, there's a lot of great olive oils out there. Don't get me wrong. Our, ours is a, a small batch, single estate. It comes from one specific area in Greece. So it's not blended with other oils. Um, it's not blended with other olive oils or olives from different regions. It's one specific olive from one area. But our, our biggest thing that you know really separates us is we offer the freshest oil available because we only do sell on Amazon and our website. So whatever you're getting is the freshest harvest available. Okay. We don't we don't carry stuff over or, or sell it to stores where they're gonna hold it for eighteen months, twenty four months. So basically you know, aside from getting a great product, um, it, it's also fresh because you can get, you can have a few, a bunch of great quality olive oils, but if you don't consume them that year, if you wait two, three years, you know, it's not nearly as good. So with that being said, what was then your introduction to affiliate marketing? Well, that I learned probably about, let's say about eight or nine months into, um, business, um, Basically, I did a podcast one evening with uh, Diane Sanfilippo, one of my friends. Uh, she had the uh, Balance Bites pod podcast, and we did it on olive oil. Um, and we did a discount code on the um, on the podcast, so we got quite a few orders the next day. So, I was, and that's when it first peaked me. I was like, "Wow, if I have one person promoting my oil, and I got all these sales." in one day after it going live, what if I had a bunch of people doing that? And that's where I really started getting interested in learning as much as I could about affiliate marketing. And just, um, and a lot of it came from the fact that I didn't have a lot of time. So I needed basically affiliates or promoting our product. 
you know, I didn't have all the time in the world to really spend marketing. So instead of looking for a ton of new customers, I focused on finding brand influencers, people that we kind of aligned in our, our company with people that were into healthy eating and food. And, um, we looked for those people and you know, that they would find our customers for us. Right. Know? But, uh, yeah, definitely learned really early on the, the power or difference one person can make. And then it was just, okay, let's streamline this. Let's get as many as we can. And it was definitely some growing pains over the first year or two, a lot of learning, you know, but um, it definitely was very productive and I mean, it was paying benefits right away. So. Yeah. I mean, we, we've talked a little bit about that in terms of time constraints, in terms of budget. Yeah. We'll get into some of the specifics, but our introduction point was I was actually working with Ludwig marketing and sales in, uh, in yeah. California and we had gotten hired by you guys to optimize your listings. Mm -hmm. So the, the key principle and takeaway for this is if you're going to drive targeted traffic to your Amazon listings, however mm -hmm. that be, you want to optimize your landing pages first because whatever you optimize it, whatever percentage of increase you see in the conversion rate, that, that plays out into an immediate conversion and increase in sales. Mm -hmm. So if you can increase your conversion rate from you know, 10% to 15%, that's a huge increase and you're going to see that increase in sales immediately without driving any more traffic to the page. So um, if people are thinking about, you know, affiliate marketing or even internal Amazon campaigns or Facebook ads, the, the million ways that you can drive traffic, it's so important to optimize first. And I remember looking at it actually just a few minutes before we jumped on some of your initial conversion rates were around 18%, which was phenomenal. Mm. But after we did the optimization and you drove traffic to it, they got as high as 30, which is unparalleled on Amazon. You don't see that. Mm -hmm. um, so that optimization first, then launch is really critical. But um, let's talk about this because, again, I, as an Amazon consultant for many, many years, the traditional way of launching is, okay, you get your products optimized, you do the keyword research, you add your photos, you get a couple of, re of reviews from past customers. And then you run some internal campaigns and slowly it builds, you know, maybe after, you know, just a few orders the first month and the next month it kind of, you know, grows from there. Maybe after a year or so you've got a strong, you know, uh, brand and stuff and you just blew all that out of the water. I think you did something like five figures in your second month after we mm -hmm. optimized and got an Amazon choice product. And that was just unheard of. I mean, you had like 50 reviews within the first 60 days. Yeah. And, and again, I was so surprised and taken aback by that because I'd never seen somebody utilize affiliate marketing the way you did it. And that's what fascinated me. And we've, we've since hired Tony for other products that we've done on Amazon and had some situations that happened unintentionally with affiliate marketing. But um, let's start to get into that uh, in, in terms of some of the nitty, -ditty, nitty gritty details. What are the biggest benefits of affiliate marketing over other types of paid advertising? Well, one, you're, to me, it's a win, win, win. I, I say that a lot, but it's a, it's a win for the consumer, a win for the brand influencer or ambassador or affiliate, whatever you want to call them, um, because they're getting paid. And it's a win for me because I don't have to go up front and pay somebody $1,000 or $50,000 or X amount of dollars to promote my product. One, we look for people who promote our product because they love the product. I think that that's key. But you know, once they are promoting their product and sharing it, I'm, I'm basically offering them a way to share something they love with their followers. And you know, some of our affiliates have 100 followers because they're brand new and just starting, and some of them have hundreds of thousands of followers. So there's no real, anybody can promote your product. You know, it's, word of mouth uh, at, at the end of the day all this uh, social media and everything um, is, is word of mouth and people are listening to these chefs or bloggers or you know LeBron James for sneakers I mean you name it everybody people are taking uh, an influencers word on said product so the biggest advantage to me is it's very minimal cost 
um, you're basically just paying for the software to track everything. And then you're paying your affiliates based on the sales that they generate. So it's from, for a, from a small business standpoint, it, in my opinion, it's unparalleled and you know, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not reaching out to these influencers. Um, not everybody's going to want to do it or say yes, but there's a lot of people who do, especially the people who are already using your products. You know? Yeah. You mentioned that when you did the training um, with one of the companies that I work with. So let's talk a little bit about how that works. Um, just start, you know, starting off, how do you find relevant affiliates? Cause I think there's, there's a key and we'll talk about maybe an exception, but mm -hmm. you definitely want to find affiliates. But when you guys were starting off, you actually went through and said, let's look at all the potential subcategories and niches that yeah. our product can be relevant to. Talk about that whole experience because I think that's really, really valuable. Yep. And, and that's going to be specific to every product. You know, I mean, if you, if, for us, food, healthy food, um, you know, if you're doing an unhealthy food, like, I mean, not <laughs> desserts or something, you're going to go to pastry chefs, but we're, we're a healthier food. Um, being that it was olive oil. So we went after people in that world, you know, whether it be, you know, the bloggers or the chefs or the um, fitness athletes. Um, but the, the first thing I think, you know, what we were talking about is look inside your own circle first. Like why go out after random strangers? The first thing is go through your own social media and see who's actually following you, who's potentially using your product already, and tackle them first. Because that, that's gonna be the easiest. Hey, you know who I am already, let me talk to you and you know, see if we can work something out. Um, after that, we, um, we basically broke down, um, like you're saying, subcategories, and we basically came out with any little category whether it be food or fitness or for, for us, it was different kinds of diets. Um, and just take a piece of paper and a pen and, and write down as many as you can. And now that we have say a hundred subcategories, then we would look for influencers within each one of those categories. So now, cause um, we start, we started out in the paleo community and we we're probably one of the more well-known olive oils in the paleo community. And, I, I saw that happening in the beginning is like we're focusing and we love the community. Both my Epi and I are deeply involved with it, but there's a lot more out there, you know, so we didn't want to just totally focus on this one community and, you know, not pay attention to everybody else. And I think that that happens a lot um, with companies, especially smaller companies. They find their little, their little market and they'll kind of get hung up inside of it. And it's like, there's, there's a whole big world out there. So we, we really wanted to expand into any little subcategory we could and start finding influencers inside of those communities. So it's not just a matter of, in your case, going after influencers who are passionate about olive oil. Like, yes, mm -hmm. that's great, but it's all the related tangential aspects of fitness, of health, yeah. of, of paleo or CrossFit and those kind yeah. of things because that gives you a much broader range of influencers as opposed to people who are just going after say gourmet food bloggers, for example. Yeah. We basically did exactly the opposite of that. Right. Because, <laughs> because, because every, you've got a million, I mean, you got a million olive oil companies doing the same exact thing. They're trying to get on a store shelf or get in front of like the next top chef or high end restaurant. And we're like, we care about, I mean, we kind of like went in the community we were involved in at the time, which was a paleo community and like the CrossFit community. And, you know, cause we're like, this is how we started. We started sharing it with our friends in the basement of a CrossFit gym, you know, and we're like, this is the real people that one, we enjoy dealing with. And, um, you know, these are the people that we're looking for to become customers. Right. So, but, you know, we didn't want to just focus on one sole uh, market, you know. So we, we really tried to expand any little possible market we can get into or look at 
you know, I mean, everything from different international diets overseas to any, any sort of diet in America, but also not only that, because olive oil kind of goes across a lot of lines, I mean, it goes from vegan to paleo, that's about as black and white as you can get, but um, also um, a lot of health and fitness communities too, like the running communities and the Spartan race communities. So basically anything where your product can possibly be utilized in, we look for influencers inside of that community. Now talk about the exception, which was your best day of sale. Cause I love this story. And I think it opens people's eyes in terms of even the niches that they think are relevant and applicable. But one of your best days of affiliate sales, they actually were not in any of those communities. Talk, talk about that or tell that story real quick. Remind me which one we're talking about. Cause we so that was the, uh, I think that was the eyebrows. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, totally forgot about that. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was totally unplanned. That's why I was wondering. I was like, what campaign did we run? Yeah. That was actually not a planned thing. Um, Anastasia of Beverly Hills, who I had no idea who she was. I don't know. You probably didn't when I brought her up to you. Even when I worked in Beverly Hills, I didn't know who she was. Yeah. Well, <laughs> long story short, a friend of a friend asked me to send some olive oil to her. I'm just going to – I'm on my phone really quick. I want to see how many uh, – uh, yeah, right now she has 15.7 million followers. Okay. Um, at the time, she might have had like five. So a couple. She's got a few. She's got a few followers. Okay. Um, and she's all into makeup and eyebrows. I'm sure most of the women watching this probably know who she is, but I did not. Sure. Um, so I sent her a bunch of olive oil. And then I was, the funny thing is I was having email conversations with her, not knowing who she was. And my sister's like, do you know who that is? But Long story short, she posted, and if you look on her Instagram, which I was very grateful to her, um, most of it's all makeup. That's all it is. But she happened to be having a dinner party one night and posted a big picture of our olive oil with a salad she had made. And our sales blew up that day. Like, we did, uh, probably, I'd say it's, it's definitely a top three. I don't know if it was our busiest day, but it's definitely a top three. Um, we've had some busy ones since last time we talked, but... Uh, but yeah, so that's, and that just goes to show like what one person that's totally outside of your world can do because that's a cool thing with food. I mean, everybody's going to eat, you know? So, uh, but she happened to post that and like, I remember I was at work with the Marine Corps and uh, my sister texted me and she's like, what's going on with our sales right now? Like we're getting sales every two minutes. And I looked at her phone and I was like, oh my goodness. But yeah, yeah, so yeah, we had a similar thing happen with Wisp. Um, we had just done a Kickstarter campaign for the Wisp system product and just to generate, um, you know, some sales and revenue and, and basically, you know, get the product exposure. Well, somebody took our video and cut and spliced it together, a website called Drooled, D-R-O-O-L-D. And they posted this video with an affiliate link to Amazon. And we'll get into the specifics in a second of how that works. And all of a sudden, you know, we're on the next morning, I get a call from the, uh, you know, the warehouse manager. He goes, um, there's a problem with our FBA inventory. I said, what? He goes, it's all tied up. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, it's all reserved. You know, there's thousands of units. And uh, so I called, I called Amazon and they go, nope, it's true. All of them are orders that are pending, you know, processing. And all of a sudden, we started seeing the merchant fulfilled orders come through. And it was like, I mean, you'd, you'd be on the phone with somebody, and over the course of 30 seconds, you'd refresh three times, and there would be like 100 orders. I mean, it was <laughs> unbelievable. I think yeah. it was something like 20,000 units in, in two days, two or three days. So, um, again, unintentional. And once it went live and viral, mm. every other influencer wanted to pick it up, and they kept yeah. their own video, and they did their own affiliate link to Amazon. Mm. And so it was literally a spiral that over the last, you know, year uh, – a little, you know, year and a few months, uh, has generated video views over a hundred million. And most of them use those affiliate links to Amazon because it's the cleanest, simplest way to do it. And they like the exposure. They like giving their audience something new. And that's the other important part to remember is that these influencers and content uh, providers, they want content. They, you know, if they don't have anything to post about, they're at a loss. They actually want products to feature, want products to promote, that sort of thing. So, Let's talk a little bit about specifics. Um, you talked about starting in your own circle. Yeah. Um, getting beyond that, what are some other ways that people can start to find some of those influencers? 
And then I have the, the follow up question is, how do you reach out to those influencers? So okay. Two part uh, question. Yeah. So as far as uh, looking for them, um, Google's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> I mean, we basically, you know, we, like I told you, we broke up our, our sub subcategories and we would literally just search all these different uh, either websites or social media is huge. Um, like I told you, first we went through our social media and saw who was following us. So we, we go after those people first and, you know, talk to them and see if they want to be affiliates. Um, then we go into those sub communities in social media. And then after social media, we would go and do searches. Um, and, you know, we, we basically brought somebody on to search all day long for us. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you just search and, and uh, re real quick before I get to the next part, like you touched on um, er earlier, it, it does snowball. A lot of times um, one influencer is using said product. A lot of influencers see what other influencers are doing. So especially in the food world, like if you're using this ketchup and it's amazing, the other chefs might start using this ketchup too. Yeah. No, note to self, influencers follow people. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you, so you'll, you'll definitely, um, you'll see a lot of like-minded influencers kind of promoting the same kind of products. Um, very common uh, if you look around a little bit. Now, as far as how you actually get an influencer, um, that just reaching out to them. Um, and there's different ways of doing that. Um, you can engage via social media. You can engage on their blog. You can send them an email through their website. Um, so basically just reach out. And um, a lot of times, well, when we started, it was usually um, uh, if, if they kind of know who we are, you know, you're going to just reach out and say, hey, what's going on? And just talk a little bit about it. But we have a, we have a set email that will generally, um, I mean, we tweak it to every individual. But we have a set format, which is very down, dirty, simple, kind of like, hey, this is who we are. This is what makes us special. Um, this is the, the benefits of being an affiliate of us. Uh, would you like to try a sample of our product? And we'll send it out to you. And if you love it and you want to promote us, hey, come on and join the team. Um, there's a lot of different features and benefits you can offer through an affiliate program. Um, even if someone's doing it, if you're doing an affiliate program through your website or with Amazon, um, generally someone's going to want to kind of see the product, taste, taste the product in our case before they start promoting it. Um, but we're actually um, testing out a video right now. We're going to put this uh, pretty much who we are what are the benefits and come sign up into a video format and cool. send that just because I like talking a lot better and I like writing. <laughs> so did a video and we're going to be testing that out a little bit. Well, it's a way to engage people. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, it's so important to that key takeaway that people don't miss that offer a sample of your product. Unless oh, yeah. you're selling $10,000, you know, diamond rings, offer them a free sample because it's the simplest way to get it into somebody's hands, let them mm -hmm. use it and taste it. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, people just reach out and say, Hey, how would you like to make some money? And uh, kind of forget that there's an intrinsic benefit of if I believe in the product and I've used the product, I'm going to be more convincing than I'm going to be. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I could be drinking a, a bottle of, of water and if I'm promoting this water to all my followers, I've got it. Well, one, if I have the product, I can post it on social media. You know, if you send it to me, I'm going to, I'm going to, at least as a thank you, post it, you know, um, and that a lot of people get inundated, and the bigger the name, the bigger they, you know, they get inundated with stuff, yeah. you know, but um, if you don't at a minimum send your product, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a good thing. <laughs> right. No, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. You talked about some features and benefit. What content and, um, and offers do you offer your affiliates? And we'll talk about some, some of the follow-up in a minute here, but what are the, some of the, the content things and offers that you offer new affiliates? Well, one, we give everybody a free 25 bucks just for signing up. Um, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Just, hey, here's $25. 
But, um, you know, to some bloggers, that's not a lot. That's nothing. But to some people that are just starting out, it's a good amount. And it, really quick before I keep going, um, that's one very important thing for any brand is not to shy away from smaller bloggers with smaller followers because a lot of times those people will have a lot more engagement with even their two, three hundred followers. You know, so, and a lot of those smaller uh, bloggers or influencers two, three, four years from now will be very big. And when they're very big, they're probably going to stay loyal to who that was with them when they were smaller. Who was willing to give them the opportunity and the shot. Yeah. I was, I was going to point that out because you mentioned that. So you don't put a cap on. Not at all. Uh, you look, you guys, you look a little small. Uh, we're not, we're not really interested. Um, it not makes a lot of sense to reach out and build that. Yeah. I, if, build if, I, if I, if I, if I've got a, I've actually got one, one of my affiliates, Sadie, I don't know if she's out watching, but I think she's like 14. <laughs> you never know it talking to her. You, you feel like you're talking to a 30 year old. She's like the most mature 14 year old I know. And I mean, her Instagram's probably got 20, 30,000 followers and she's an amazing cook um, wow. slash chef, you know, but um, you know, here she's a little 13, 14 year old chef and she's promoting my olive oil all the time, you know, but there's no doubt in my mind five years from now, she's going to probably have three or four cookbooks out by then. Right. You know? So, um, yeah, you just uh, never shy away from anybody because, to, in my opinion, if you get one sale from a, an affiliate or an influencer, that's one sale you wouldn't have had without them. Yeah. You know, so, but um, just as far as other, like, incentives. So, we, we do definitely give somebody uh, a monetary uh, little sign-on bonus for coming on board, and we give them a sample for coming on board. Um, and then they get, and obviously this is going to be different for every brand, but we give them a, a pretty good percentage discount to our products for life. But for they per, just use for personal their own, use. For their, yeah, so for Christmas yeah, for gifts personal. and that kind of thing. Yeah. Friends and family. Yeah. And then, um, and then we also have uh, vanity codes, which is a, a discount code that they can offer to their followers. Okay. Um, so that's, that's definitely, a, that's a really good perk actually, especially when you're dealing with print or podcasts, mm -hmm. um, that basically somewhere where you can't click or even Instagram, um, because Instagram, they're getting better with clicking, but, uh, there's not a lot of links on Instagram. I mean, now, now you can swipe up on the stories or, you know, but, um, on a regular post, you can actually write on there, use discount code, whatever. And that gets tied to commissions. Um, so Got it. Now let's, let's get in and talk about the Amazon associates program because specifically, mm -hmm. um, you know, for Amazon, it's absolutely huge. I know they made some changes recently, but let's just explain real quick what Amazon associates program is and how that sort of works just in a general brief overview. I mean, it's very similar to our program in that you're getting your affiliate commissions through Amazon instead of through the brand's website. Um, and that, but the, the cool thing about that is you can, it's very vast and you can promote any sort of product, the different products. Um, and, and I love Amazon, but they change things a lot. So you got to kind of keep up to date with it. Um, different products will get different percentage, uh, commissions. Right. Um, so, but, but you, there's also other benefits as far as if, if somebody buys something through Amazon on your product and then they keep buying a few other things, you might get even more commissions. Um, and I was going to mention that as well because that's huge. I don't know what the yeah. exact specs are. I never order one thing off of Amazon, like nope. ever. <laughs> In fact, I needed something that was, uh, you know, an add-on item. So I had to buy like a couple other things. It's, you know people have incentive to buy multiple things. So how does that work? If I, if I click an affiliate link to buy your olive oil and well, I also add these two or three other things, does that per pace person make a commission off of everything? Yes, yes. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example because it happened to me today. Well, it didn't happen to me. I did it. Um, I was on Amazon buying a, uh, I'm, I'm setting up a, a really nice office space with a new desk. So I wanted to get a, uh, uh, a wireless keyboard and a mouse. $30, dollars Well, I ended up buying like a four hundred dollar monitor. <laughs> so, had I clicked on somebody's link for that mouse, yeah, would have got the commissions for the mouse, the keyboard, and the monitor. 
right. anything else I decided to buy. So, and that's huge because people look at it and sometimes th think, well, if Amazon's changing their affiliate commissions, they're not going to want to buy my $10 product, for example. Um, but when you consider the fact that if they're driving, mm -hmm. if, if they have millions of followers and they're driving, you know, thousands of clicks and traffic, plus those people are all likely going to buy other things that, in addition to that. No, definitely. It's still worth it for them. So don't, again, don't shy away from the value of your own product. Um, we do mention, we do recommend if you have a smaller um, product that's, you know, especially if it's consumable, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, gourmet food companies, um, consider doing multi-packs. So like a two pack, yeah. three pack, lots of food brands do that. It gets you typically above the $20 mark, which is a really good sweet spot and yeah. allows customers to get a really good value. They'll get a discount for buying the multi-pack, but it also typically increases your margins for FBA. And oh yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, we really, you know, we, we, we've got, we look at it essentially as two affiliate programs because we have the one for our, our website and for Amazon and we promote both of them. And, you know, so, some people um, don't like having multiple different affiliate programs and they stay specifically with Amazon, yeah. which makes sense. I get it. Like if you're promoting 50 different products, you know, you don't want 50 different logins and all, you know, so. Amazon is like your one-stop source for promoting products and not to mention you can snowball with other things that people buy it. I mean, yeah. you could go there just to buy a $15 book that was hyperlinked and end up, you know, getting a hundred dollars commission because somebody bought a big screen or something. Right. You know, so that's definitely, um, definitely one really great thing about Amazon's program. Now I want to talk about launch because there's so, there's so many different aspects of this um, that are important, but for, for launching new products, we actually just updated Marketplace Seller Courses, course number four, which is launching mm -hmm. new products. And we included affiliate um, marketing because again, it, it, it's new and it's unbelievable. Um, you know, some of the other aspects that you can look at are social media, print, <clears throat> um, you know, email and that sort of thing. But uh, and even, you know, pay per click, you know, people will do that to drive external traffic to their Amazon listings. Mm -hmm. But the idea that Tony, you know, brought forward was you can reach out to somebody, have them drive traffic to your listings. And if you have something like feedback genius set up, you can get verified purchase reviews without giving away tons of, you know, product. A lot of people are, you know, being told that, oh, you have to give away that, you know, 2000 products a, a week or just ridiculous things. And, and the idea that you don't have to pay for it until after, or the idea that you don't have to pay for it at all, that Amazon will pay for it is mm. mind boggling. I mean, that's a, that's 180 degree, you know, yeah, change. that's huge. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's huge because that's, and that's a difference for me as a brand. So I always look at both sides of it because I do a lot of affiliate marketing on my own with other products. So I'm like an affiliate, but then I also am a brand and pay affiliates. Right. So we pay our affiliates a lot of money every month um, through our website sales. Um, but anybody that buys our olive oil on Amazon that go through an affiliate or an influencer, which I know a lot of them do, um, I don't pay a commission to that uh, influencer. Amazon does it for me. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's part of where our, as a seller, where our FBA fees go to, I'm sure, yeah. you know, but, um, but either way that, and that, that is a key distinction to, you know, affiliate marketing when it comes to your own program and Amazon's program is the fact that on yours, you're paying with Amazon, they're paying. Well, in addition to that, you know, the other side of this was you didn't just use it for launch. You've used it ongoing. Yeah. And so, you know, you basically said, look, I don't do SEO. I don't do paid advertising. I'm not worried about all these other, you know, tons of different kind of marketing that you can do mm -hmm. because of your time limitation, just focusing on affiliate marketing. It's not simply a one and done. You can continue to reach out to new affiliates. And I work with, you know, oh, dozens yeah. of brands on Amazon and not, it's not only great to sustain your um, ranking, but, but if you think about how Amazon works in terms of the algorithms and the ranking, Mm -hmm. If you sell more product, the conversion rate increases. 
Amazon is going to increase that product in the organic rankings as, as well, which means if you're driving affiliate marketing towards your product from the outside, you also have the capacity to rank organically high, higher inside. So your overall organic uh, sales are going to be higher in addition to the affiliate sales. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we have, we have products that are like number two in terms of the bestseller list. And I imagine with a little bit of affiliate marketing, we could be number one bestseller and to get, mm -hmm. You know, the difference between number one bestseller and number, uh, you know, number two is huge. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you can get that number one bestseller badge and keep it and continue to drive traffic using uh, affiliate uh, marketing, it's a huge opportunity for brands. Like you said, uh, you know, both small and emerging because they're not going to have maybe the budget or the brand awareness mm -hmm. that other companies will have. Um, and again, the fact that I've seen people spend thousands of dollars, um, you know, through you know, CPC, you know, campaigns internally that were costing them $5 per click, $4 per click. And they were at a, you know, maybe a hundred percent a cost, which is break even excluding Amazon fees. Like you're not making any yeah. money, you're losing it. Um, yeah. It's a huge opportunity for brands to, to leverage that. Um, yeah. Aspect. No, definitely. And then one, one other uh, key point now that I'm just thinking about it now, but we definitely promote it is anybody that, um, is on your affiliate program and um, selling on Amazon um, or vice versa, you can, you can um, ask them or request them to promote your Amazon listing if you want to do things like increase your Amazon sales because all this extra traffic coming in is going to you know, obviously, like you're saying, increase your ranking in Amazon. And obviously, you know, that, that's got a snowball effect and it's going to, it's going to end up increasing your sales down the road as well. But um, if they are, if somebody's promoting j your product only on Amazon and has not signed up for your program, it's great that they're selling your, or you're promoting your product, but you have no way of contacting them. Mm -hmm. If you get them signed up onto your program, then you can at least engage with them and let them know when you have sales coming up or, Hey, this is what our black Friday or cyber Monday sale on Amazon is going to be, you know? Um, so it, cause I've, I've, I've talked to a few people that are like, well, if there's, if they're just promoting my products on Amazon, I don't need them on my affiliate program. I was like, you actually kind of should get them on your affiliate program, even if they don't sell on your affiliate program. Right. Just for the fact that, Hey, I can reach out and contact thousands of my affiliates all at one time, you know, like I did th today to say, Hey, I'm doing a webinar on this. Some of them are probably watching right now. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if they're not part of your affiliate program, you can't really reach out to everybody and let them know about specials or deals you're doing or, you know, w basically what you want them to promote. Well, yeah, I mean, you consider the fact that maybe you get a new product coming mm -hmm. in or, or that, yeah. new assets and resources. One of the companies that I work with, they've intentionally looked at sort of the high points of their sales throughout the year and mm -hmm. then looked at the low points and said, how can we offset those low sales with affiliate marketing and influencer marketing? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at Amazon, that's what Amazon did with Prime Day. Their Prime Day and their Prime Week, that was like, okay, this is Just our week of the year. Let's create our own Christmas. And, you know, yeah. they did. Um, so let's talk about content that you provide, not just the initial contact, um, but now they're signed up as an affiliate. They've got your olive oil. They bought it for friends and family, you know, using the coupon code. Um, what content do you provide them throughout the month um, or over the months that's going to help them continue to do it? Because you don't want to just do it one time. No, that okay, yeah. good luck. And you figure they promoted you on time and they're done. Your goal is continuing to uh, provide them with quality content that will be new and different and engaging for their audience. Yeah. Like, like, like I mean, we talked about it before, but I mean, with an affiliate program, you're only going to get what you put out, of, you know, put into it. Um, you know, if you just sign up an affiliate and say, Oh, here's some oil and just promote it this week, you know, um, that's probably all you're going to get from it. Um, if you engage with your affiliates, like, I mean, on my email, I'm very clear, like, hey, call me anytime if you want to do giveaways, if you want me to promote your 
cookbook that's coming out next month. If you, anything you want to do. So my biggest thing is to stay very engaged with them. And, um, what I really like to do, honestly, as far as, um, figuring out what kind of content to put out is, well, most important thing is do what works. Yeah. So I can have say a thousand affiliates the top 10% earners are generally doing something different than everybody else. Um, so I try to teach all the other people, especially the newer people who, you know, it, and the coolest thing about it, and, I, and I'm very like upfront and honest about this because I, I, I love talking affiliate marketing. It's just fun to me. And, um, but I love helping like brand new people that are clueless about it, especially like new bloggers or because they're like, how do I do this? You know? And I'm like, um, everybody starts somewhere. And if you can show them like, Hey, this is what people that are making a really good living off of this are doing. This is how you do it. You know, that's the first and foremost thing. I'm going to teach them what I see works best. Cause I can kind of see it all from the back view. You know, I see who's selling the most and what they're doing in order to do that. And who's not selling much, even though they're active and what might not be working. You know, so I really, really like to teach what, what's working to my affiliates. Um, then um, my biggest thing is just asking them what they want to know. <laughs> um, we're actually, like I was talking about that video, we're re redoing our entire um, facts, and our facts and questions section of our website for our customers, but also our facts and questions for our affiliates, just to make sure the program inside and out is, is simple, is streamlined and as um, transparent as possible. Like even like the simple little things like um, how do you, how do you create a, a personalized vanity code? You know, for someone that's not, not really computer savvy or, you know, used to these kinds of programs, they might not know where to go and click and how to request it. You know, to someone that does it regularly, it's like, okay, this is simple, but, Right. You know, to a lot of people, they're, they're new at this, um, even though, and they probably have the potential to do really well. It's just a lot of times they don't know. So I try to like put myself in the situation of someone that really doesn't know anything at all and teach those people that. And then the people that are pretty savvy on this stuff, um, just give them as much content as possible or any tools they could possibly need at all. Well, and let's talk about that aspect of content because it goes both ways. And this is really crucial. We talked about content for social media. Mm -hmm. You want to provide content for your affiliates to inspire them in terms of, you, you, you mentioned listing the features and benefits of your product. So mm -hmm. they know how to, you know, describe it, not just, hey, here's our product, go promote it. You, oh, yeah, definitely. you don't want to do that. You want to, you want to equip them with tools and resources so they really understand the features and benefit of the product and they know how to position it. In addition mm -hmm. to having it, they, they, want to, they want to know the information behind that. In addition, once you give them some of those, um, you know, resources, whether it's graphics, you know, whether it's a video or, or just some, some content, they're going to likely turn around and create their own content, which in turn gives you more content for your social media. You talked about exactly. if all I do is repost other things that, pictures, videos, and things that people put on their Instagram, mm -hmm. their Facebook, and their Twitter, you won't ever have to create content probably for the rest of the business. No, so yeah, never. a little bit about that dual benefit because it's really, really huge. Well, I'll go for, from when I first started, when I had like a thousand followers on social media, when Tony was in his apartment in Texas creating all his own content. <laughs> so I'd be making like Greek salads and, you know, lamb chops or whatever, pouring olive oil on it. So I was creating the content which sucks because, I mean, I love cooking, but I like to cook quick and get it over with and eat and I'm done. Sure. Uh, I don't like making stuff all really pretty and everything. <laughs> but, um, but I learned, hey, after I had about, you know, 20, 30 affiliates in the beginning, all these affiliates are creating all these really great pictures and posting them on social media. So as a kind of thank you to them, hey, look at this amazing dish you know this affiliate created with our olive oil so i'd post that to the point where i was like okay social media is a lot easier now because i don't have to be creating all this 
content because I really don't have the time to create food content um, to the point where now um, I couldn't keep up with it. I mean, we're tagged in like at least a hundred food pictures a day, you know, and, and, and it's kind of hard to tell like on Instagram or Facebook if it's an affiliate or just a customer. Um, because, you know, at this point we've got so many affiliates at, at first I knew them all name, but you know, by name and everything and talk to them all the time. But not now it's a point where it's just, it's so many. So, um, and that's another thing that I like to communicate with them. It's if you're posting stuff with us and, and, and this is, um, this is really important with affiliates, whether it's Amazon or your website is to be very clear and concise in what you're asking of them. So if, if uh, I send you olive oil, I would say, please tag me at Cassandrinos and hashtag our specific hashtag, because if they don't, I'm never going to see it. Mm -hmm. and, and my social media girl is not going to see it at all, just because it's so much. But also, if it's a smaller blogger with maybe a thousand followers and they want to increase their following, I'm like, shoot me a quick email and say, hey, can you promote this? Because, I mean, I'll gladly, I mean, to me, it's a two-way streak. I mean, I definitely like our affiliates to promote us, but I love promoting them. You know, we do, um, we, we touched on this before, but doing co-giveaways. Because a lot of times, uh, a lot of influencers will have their own either products or um, books or, you know, so something that they're selling that's tangible that you can cross-promote. So I, I embrace any opportunity to cross promote with any of our affiliates. Cause to me, not just, a, a, again, it's that win, win, win situation. Right. You know, it's a win for us. It's a win for the influencer and it's a win for the customer. And it gets, it gets you away from having to spend a bunch of money that you are literally throwing out in the air, hoping some of it sticks. I mean, I still look at you drive by and you see a movie, a movie poster on a bus stop and you're thinking, where's the value at in that? I mean, really, mm -hmm. You know, yes, a lot of people see it, but is anybody going to actually go watch the movie because they saw it on a bus stop somewhere? Mm -hmm. but, but the power of if influencer marketing, really, not just affiliate marketing, but influencer marketing is, is so key because if I talk about me and I talk about the courses that I've created or, or, or that sort of thing with marketplace seller courses and I talk about, you know, what they can do in the better, that's great. But if you've been through the courses mm -hmm. and you talk about it, it's a whole different ball game. And it's not just somebody speaking for themselves, it's somebody else. And that third party testimonial review is huge when it comes to it. Oh, um, because the credibility just goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's, you look at like, well, anybody that's an influencer has people that they influence based on what they're doing or what they're using. You know, so it's like if you're a, a fitness model and you're doing this workout regime every day, your followers want to know what you're doing, so they're going to do it. Or they want to know what supplements you're taking or what kind of sneakers you're wearing. You know, I mean, that, that's it's really a, at the end of the day, you know, this whole thing is about basically people doing or buying the products or services that the the influencer is using on their own you know and to me it's really um i think a lot of times you can see through if um influencers are doing it just for the monetary reasons or if they're doing it because they really love the product yeah um, i really try and seek out um influencers who are going to do that because they love the product um now there's you know you got to introduce your product at some point to new people that don't know what your product is. But even at that, you know, I, I'd rather have 20 smaller people promoting my product because they really love it to their followings than paying someone, you know, just to promote it just because we're paying you to do it. And you've talked about that before. Uh, give the email example. There's a buddy of yours who wanted a certain amount up front as a fee. Mm -hmm. And you've basically said, I don't pay for affiliate marketing. <laughs> That's yeah. not how it works. Yeah, we pay after it works. Talk, yeah. talk about that example and, you know, your convincing statement and looking at your data and what the outcome of that was. Yeah, we, we don't, we like don't pay for Instagram posts or, and, and I might be wrong. I mean, I, I just, I, 
I don't really believe in it. You know, me and my sister have talked about it and I'm not going to pay somebody to, to use my product. It might sound kind of like pretentious or whatever, but, um, I want them to use it cause they like it. Yeah. You know? It fits and, your brand. It's unique. Yeah. It's authentic to you. I mean, at the end of the day, we're a small family owned business. You know, we don't have a, you know, a, a board of directors telling us, Hey, we got to sell this much or, you know, whatever. Like I, I'd rather, I mean, and, and same reason why we're not like selling out and going into grocery stores. You know, we'd rather not be in grocery stores and sell the freshest product available, you know? So at the end of the day, that's, that's more on us because some people might want to sell and just, I just don't want to pay somebody to be promoting it just, just to get paid to do it. You know, it just doesn't sit well with me. And, and I honestly believe that you can do better with, just finding a bunch of people who really like your product. Well, and you mentioned that there's a buddy of yours who basically said, Hey, look, I want a flat fee. This is what I charge. And you mm -hmm. convinced him to forego yeah. the upfront fee and to take the back end. Talk about what that looked like. Yeah. Yeah. So one, one of my friends who uh, does a lot of affiliate marketing, he uh, wanted to send an email blast and charge us X amount of dollars. And I've actually had this conversation just recently with a, a podcaster. Um, is that a word? Podcaster? Someone that does podcasts. It is now. Yeah. All right. But, uh, and, and cause she had contacted me, she actually contacted me about, um, asking if I'd like to do, uh, paid advertising on her podcast to help support her podcast. I was like, you know, I, I'm not going to do, I, I'm not going to do that. But, um, if you want to use a vanity code as an affiliate, um, for what you're charging, cause it really wasn't much. And it, it, it's not the, it's not really the, the fact of paying the money. It's just, it's more of a principal type thing. If, if we start doing it, then you open up the floodgates and it's like, it, it goes down a dirty road. But, um, but you know, I, sh I showed him and her, both of them, that, hey, you could probably make more money doing affiliate marketing with us and promoting our product with um, either your, a, a clickable link or on your podcast using a, a discount code. But my buddy who shot out the email, he made almost double what he would have had we paid him a flat fee in commissions. Right. So now w with that, um, like we get a lot of solicitations like, um, doing email blasts, um, regularly or, yeah. or promoting our product. Um, at first I'd like just delete or dismiss them or be like, no, thanks. You know, whatever. Um, if it was someone in the, that was it not spam, just someone, I would always, you know, respond back to them, but I'd be like, no. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, wait a minute, let me try, let me try and change their mind a little bit, you know? And uh, I started with my one buddy and then a few others. And I've gotten quite a few of them to, to try it out. And for the most cases, it, it works. So if you, if you are a brand, um, definitely don't close that door. Just talk to the person and be like, you know, hey, and my biggest fear was like, I don't want to drop, you know, four or $5,000 and only make enough to just break even or just, you know, not break even. Um, but if we do an, you know, like an affiliate connection here, we'll see. And it's yeah. going to probably work out, you know, if the numbers match up, it's probably going to work on your advantage. Now for influencers, I would definitely say don't, you know, close your mind to um, doing the affiliate route instead of just paying for a post or a newsletter or uh, Instagram uh, pictures or a story or whatever it is. You know, um, there are some really big name um, Instagram pages out there, really big, really big name that charge like astronomical amounts of money that um, that I've been, had come to me and ask us about it. I'm like, we are way too small for that. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're talking like mega corporation type right. promotions, you know, the people that have million dollar budgets for marketing and, uh, you know, it's, it's just like, yeah, if, if you've got an unlimited budget for marketing, go ahead. But, um, yeah, just for, from an influencer, uh, standpoint and from a brand standpoint, um, I would definitely at least try it out because, you know, if you're a blogger or a, or a podcast guy and you, you want us a sponsor, 
and we do try it out and you want to charge me a thousand dollars an episode, but you ended up making two grand in commissions. What would, you know, the two grand is more beneficial to you. Right. So I always tell everybody, you know, try it out. If it doesn't work. Okay, cool. Didn't work. If it does, Hey, you made out, you know, well, we're, we're about to wrap up, but I want to, kind of hit the last question and then we'll take any Q and A's from anybody who's on the podcast or the, the webinar. Um, what's the best advice for companies uh, getting into affiliate marketing and what are some of the most common mistakes you make? It's a big question so you can answer it as simply as you want, but uh, best advice, like this would be my best advice and here's probably the most common mistake that I see a lot of new companies trying to do affiliate, okay. affiliate marketing. Yeah. Uh Best advice is really, um, we touched on it a little bit earlier, but it's really the most important, in my opinion, is start in your own community or wherever you're at. Start there and really um, saturate it and, and do your best to get every influencer possible um, and, and, and expand from there. But don't, don't try and go in too many directions right away because you can only do so much with how many people you have working this thing for you or if you're doing it. So start, start small and it will grow. And like I was saying earlier, you know, influencers in the same community, when they see each other promoting the same things, it kind of snowballs from there. Right. Um, so that's definitely, you know, the most important thing right away. Um, biggest mistake I see people making is um, once they have a program up and running and okay, I got my software in my website. I've got 20 brand new affiliates. Um, I'm going to keep focusing on getting more affiliates. If you just sign up an affiliate or an ambassador or an influencer and you forget about them, chances are nothing is going to happen six months down the road or three months down the road. So it's um, basically pay attention to your people. You know, don't, 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 don't just be looking just to sign people up because you're much better off having 20 really solid affiliates and influencers who promote your product to their circle right. than a hundred that aren't really doing much. Yeah. The 80, 20 rule does not apply here. It's more like two ninety eight. Exactly. You know, it's like 2% yeah. will bring in 98% of your sales and vice versa. We yeah. had a question from Ron. He says, I assume that your products are not really expensive. If someone sends traffic to your Amazon listing, how much can they make? Um, good, good, decent question. It plays into what we talked about earlier is it's purchasing your product plus any other products the customer purchases will get the, uh, the affiliate commission. But um, can you answer your, that question the best? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, dep depending on, on the influencer, those pennies or those dollars add up. <laughs> you know, uh, if it's a smaller price product, say it's a $5 toy I don't know, a five dollar toy um, right. you know, your commissions are going to be smaller on that item than a hundred dollar item but you're probably going to be getting more sales on a cheaper item anyways but even if you're not like we said earlier people generally don't go into amazon and buy one thing that's like trying to go into target with your shopping list and not come out spending more than you planned on going in with you know yeah so it's it's that, economy of scale and a lot of these affiliates they've got if not tens of thousands, they've got millions of followers. So mm -hmm. they promote a very, very cheap product and make a huge commission. And they're posting, you know, if not a couple times a day, multiple times a day, you know, to be able to get that. Yep. Um, we've got a, a follow-up question about expand your sales to, uh, sales to overseas markets. Um, we can maybe follow up with that after. Um, there's a couple more, it's a little bit out of the scope, but I do want to, um, Ask oh, you definitely touch international. Huh? We can definitely touch on international. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do a follow-up webinar just on international. Mm -hmm. We've talked about uh, expanding to like Amazon UK or mm -hmm. you know, making it feasible. But um, two quick questions. Do you ever create coupon codes for your Amazon affiliates that you will pay them a, a commission in addition to what Amazon pays them? Like a promo code or a coupon code? I have not. That's actually the first. I never even thought of doing that. I'm at the, while we're recording this, exactly. write that down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've never done that. Well, and the follow-up to that is um, Amazon has recently introduced social landing pages, mm -hmm. uh, which allows you to have a deal or a coupon code um, yeah. 
that you can easily promote on social? Have you used that at all um, with any I, affiliates? I have, I have not with affiliates. Um, I've actually only used it one time, and that was for, uh, I think, around Christmas time. We had used it. But uh, it's definitely, that's something we have discussed, and we'll probably be doing that uh, so probably about another month or two out. But uh, yeah. yeah, haven't done it yet. But. Well, and the reason I mention it is, you know, the potential's there that it basically, because it's a unique URL, that people mm -hmm. who are just in Amazon, they won't see that deal, they won't see the coupon, then it allows yeah. you to have somebody, you know, share with an affiliate, and you can track the amount of sales that go through that link. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's another um, a good thing, how we were talking earlier, that if your affiliates are actually signed up to your specific affiliate program, you can reach out to them and say, hey, is anybody interested in doing this? You know, who has an Amazon affiliate account? Um, yeah. Who wants to do this? And um, yeah, that's something, we, we, I've actually talked to a few of my uh, affiliate friends, so, some of my friends are affiliates, um, that have pretty big followings, and uh, we're looking at doing something um, just to kind of track and play around with uh, what the differences are between uh, Amazon sales and our website sales, utilizing the uh, the same content. Interesting. Yeah, we're gonna actually uh, send an email, the same exact email, utilizing our website and Amazon with the same deal, and see if there's any difference. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to uh, go ahead and post this in the comments of both the webinar and, uh, and on Facebook. But if you want to contact Tony um, for any follow-up, uh, you can reach him at cassandrinosconsulting.com. Um, and basically, uh, you know, again, I think it's absolutely a huge um, benefit. We've covered it in Marketplace Seller Courses and course number four, Launching New Products. We've got some tips in there on how to go, go into Google and do searches to find those Amazon associates and Amazon affiliates. And uh, as Tony mentioned, finding ways to reach out to them, offer them a sample of the product and get that going because you, you've made a comment. You said, I don't care how big my social following is. I only care about the social following of my influencers and affiliates. Yeah. yeah. That's really true is instead of me trying to reach one customer at a time with a Google ad, you know, cost per click, mm -hmm. or a Facebook ad, you know, one person at a time, when they may, may, may not get it, if I can reach one person who's an influencer, an affiliate, that has their huge audience, they can reach tons of people at the same time, plus, they have added credibility that your Google ad will never have, or your Facebook post will never have, because it's put out by you, and this is put out by them, we talked about that sort of referral, you know, component of it previously, so, yeah. uh, Tony, any, any last, um, any last thoughts or, or uh, words before we sign off here? No, no, just uh, oh, just really quick on the international thing, the whole social media thing. There's no borders. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, we got a lot. You know, a lot of people like down in New Zealand and Australia and Europe and Asia, and um, yeah, it's part of the global economy. Now we're all trying to get everywhere. So uh, as you expand and get out there, um, the, uh, you got to look for people who promote your product in those nations. Yeah. And I'm also going to put in a link, uh, the, your Amazon.com storefront. It's uh, mm -hmm. Amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash Cassandrinos. And you can see the olive oil that they have available. Again, uh, work with Ludwig Marketing and Sales to be the copy on that. Um, Tony, again, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Again, okay. if you want to contact Tony, it's CassandrinosConsulting.com. If you'd like more information on how to increase your Amazon sales, check us out at MarketplaceSellerCourses.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll uh, send out a follow-up email once we're done.